the importance of scale. So descriptive models, ordinary data, they tend to be single scale, whereas complex systems and data tend to be multiple scale. And therefore, big data is multi-scaled with features at ranges of different sizes. So big data has a high variety underlying structure. In particular, you can have big data sets that seem very similar, but have very different mathematically non-isomorphic underlying structures. So no, naively hacking an existing application to work with new data often results in failure. We will, however, often take existing applications and we'll modify them so that they work for new data. But we have to do so being informed uh, as to what it is that differs in content and structure from the existing to this new data set. Well, that's not good. You may say, you know, most of my academic success is because I found existing stuff, hacked it so it would work for the new thing. And of course, partial credit. So don't panic. We'll still solve most of our problems via the modification of old solutions. We just can't do it naively. In other words, blindly. Well, I'm, it'll be imperative that we first explore the underlying structure of this new data so that it can inform our work. Got to know what's going on. So big data often com comes from complex systems. A complex system is a high dimensional interdependence of both predictable and unpredictable processes. Mathematically, many variables, and we tend to call these variables features. Some are regular and some are random. Structurally, there are very important shapes and meaningful patterns, but they tend to be difficult or even impossible to comprehend. Example, weather is a complex system. And a complex system often involves multiple scales. Both big and small are important. So scale is a key idea in understanding structure. Scale means dimensional relationships among parts. The words big and data in this diagram are of the same scale. A high variety structure often has many different scales. So for instance, Size and motion of a human have very different scales from size and motion of a protein. But even common everyday phenomena tend to involve processes at different scales. For example, on a local scale, the Earth is flat, flat field, straight road. But on a global scale, the Earth is round. So in daily life, we have different structures at all sorts of different scales. For example, GPS is not possible unless you think about a round Earth. The scales that are important depend on what questions you want answers to. So big data from complex systems often contains information from many different scales, but for purposes of resolution of the smallest scale, that's the scale at which it's collected. Big data is often multi-scale. These high variety complex structures have many different scales. Complex systems often have interactions on one scale that produce complex phenomena on another scale. We call that emergence. So complex systems and big data, we're often trying to study emergence. Genotype, DNA, protein scale, leads to phenotypes like diseases, genetic defects, these sorts of things. Pathogens lead to epidemics. In fact, there are many situations where you have many individual agents that lead to a collective overall behavior. Twitter, recommender systems, and Facebook, social networks, economic activity, these are all made up of individual agents, but what we're interested in is an overall behavior. Videos going viral, for instance. 
See, we exist because of emergence. Everything a human is and does is due to the activities of proteins inside each cell. So first, we explore what makes a given data set unique. And often, that's by looking at the different scales reflected in the data. For example, here's some Twitter data. Uh, this is from a data set called Tech Tweets. And these are actual tweets about tech products. Now, in the collection of these tech tweets, uh, it was determined that these tweets are associated with positive messages about their tech. These tweets are negative messages about that tech. And sentiment, positive or negative, is a large-scale phenomenon. It's something that you build up from smaller scale of words. See, an individual word does not have a sentiment. So what causes a tweet to be positive rather than negative? Well, we have to explore. Here is some code that we'll look at in the notebook for loading these tech tweets and looking at them. This is a small data set. Mainly, uh, we're going to be looking at the value of exploration in our first assignments. So here we look at just the positive and negative tweets, and we eliminate the neutral and irrelevant tweets. So our temptation, uh, and this will actually be our first approach uh, in the second module, is to reduce sentiment to the word scale. So look at these words. They're all words that occur multiple times, and they occur in both positive and negative tweets. Words do not have a sentiment. Also, going back to that warning from earlier, you may be tempted to say, well, let's, first thing we'll do is get rid of the stop words. This is something you'll see a lot of times when people are working with tweets and documents. Get rid of the stop words. But in this application, the word of will actually be a very important word. So we're also going to need models that can handle multiple scales. So traditional models are single scale. And that's traditional is what we call descriptive models. Descriptive models uh, tend to be an equation plus a variable modeling the noise. Typically, there's only a few model variables. Uh, and an equation model is just that. It's an equation. It tends to only involve smooth differentiable functions. Noise is assumed to explain how the data differs from the model. So the noise assumption hides all the lower scales. The largest scale is modeled by the equation, and then everything else is packed into the noise. Let's look at linear regression. Here we have y equals mx plus b. That's our equation model. x and y are the variables. m and b are the parameters. The data is of the form y sub i equals mx sub i plus b plus r sub i, where the r sub i are the residuals. This is the noisy part. And we tend to think of these residuals as all being independent trials of a random variable. And Gauss said that if this R has a normal distribution, then we get a line that's the line of best fit for the data. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you look at the area of a bar over the real axis, uh, closed interval AB, then the area of the bar is the percentage of the residuals that are between A and B. And if you get a bell curve shaped histogram of the residuals, then you get the line is the best fit model. So linear regression is on the scale of the variables and parameters. All smaller scales are noise or the residuals. And no larger scales are considered. Descriptive modeling, therefore, hides smaller scales. So for instance, the moon orbiting the Earth is on the scale of thousands of miles for huge masses. So perturbations, the Earth isn't quite spherical, still is on the same scale, or at most a slightly smaller scale. 
In other words, you don't need to know the address of every person on Earth in order to model the moon orbiting the Earth. Differentiability uh, essentially says the largest scale can be modeled by a singular linear transformation. Linear transformation. Smaller scales vanish in the limit of distances approaching zero. Here we have differentiability. Notice that in the limit, as you approach the point of tangency, everything disappears except that one single scale modeled by the linear transformation. Multiscale need not be locally linear. So this is actually a, a fractal function. It's a continuous function. But it's a fractal. So it's got what's called self-similarity. Patterns repeat at smaller and smaller scales. And features at all scales, you still get continuity for the most part, but you may not get differentiability. So for example, if I zoom in on this curve, which is a continuous everywhere, but differentiable nowhere, there's not a single point where I have a tangent line. In other words, there's not a single point on this curve where I can say, there is only one scale. And you can see that as we zoom in here. So we often need to work across multiple scales. Protein scale uh, causes human scale effects. Uh, I mean, sorry, protein scale causes of human scale effects. And consider the earth is to a human as a human is to a protein. We don't need the human scale in astronomy, but certainly if we're going to study proteins, we're often very interested what they produce on the human scale. So multiple scales imply huge data sets. Protein activity is on the scale of minutes. Uh, it's often due to molecular interactions on the scale of nanoseconds. We need billions of samples a second. Twitter viral trends last for days, but tweets can be sent mere seconds apart. We need a lot of tweets. In general, big data is large and complex because the data was produced by a multi-scale complex process and multiple scales require extensive amounts of data. And of course we need models that are complex enough to allow representations at one scale to predict phenomena at a different scale. We need models that handle multiple scales. Now we notice information at many scales means we have massive amounts of data at the smallest scale. Information at many scales means we've got huge numbers of variables. We also need models that can model underlying structures. And therefore, we're going to start using algorithms instead of equations and making predictions instead of finding solutions. So analytics and predictive modeling. Analytic is an inference from data used to make a decision or make a prediction. Making a decision is an algorithm. Diagnostic testing produces an analytic, such as prediction of whether or not you're positive for a given disease. An analytic often uses information from multiple scales to suggest an optimal decision. A predictive model is an assignment of a probability to every possible outcome of a process. Assigning a probability is an algorithm. The model is a probability distribution. The prediction of the model is an optimal probability distribution. So big data and scale. Emergence is a key issue, but to study it, we need data sets large enough to reflect multiple scales, that's high volume, enough variety to allow emergent behaviors, that's high variety, and algorithms fast enough to produce answers, high velocity. Big data has information that can't be expressed as an equation in regular variables. Descriptive models don't always work. We tend to need algorithms that can cross multiple scales.